tonight I would like to share with you one of my biggest passion, which is security. And what to me is really fascinating about it is this duality that I try to capture in the title between obscurity and openness. I'd like to start with a definition borrowed from cryptography, where a system should be secure even when the attacker knows everything about the system, except a little piece of information which we call the key. So security calls for openness, and vice versa I think is true, openness means trust, and I believe this is why we all here love open source projects, because instinctively we tend to trust them more. So if we take this classical example between iOS and Android, and if I were to ask which one is more open, I think everybody agrees it's Android, right? Even though if we zoom into Android, we know that not everything is completely open, and the closer we go to the hardware, the more thing gets proprietary and obscure. And so if we ask why and we dig deeper, typically what we get as an answer is that obscurity is because of security. So I think this is pretty paradoxical, ironic, I guess. So security calls for openness, and openness means trust, and then some part of a system are not open, and why is that? And we are back to security. So in this cycle, there is clearly something we like and something we probably want to break. And so as a community, I think we should try for more open source alternative. Can you even imagine a world without an open source operating system, for example? So, and by the way, I'm not saying that everything should be open, right? Like there are, I'm personally also working on closed stuff, but I think as a community, again, we should provide alternatives for users to choose from. And this to me is specifically important in the field that I love, which is security. And again, the closer you go to hardware, the false the statement it is. And so for example, hardware security keys are not open today. So in August 2018, with a group of friends, we decided to co-found solo keys where we make open source hardware for secure applications and we started from user login. We made Solo. Solo is the first security key to be open source and to implement the newest standard 502, which, by the way, was great with GitHub, and so you should try it out. And so this is a little bit of our history. In October, we did a Kickstarter, raised 123,000 from about 3,000 people. In November, we passed all the certification tests, so we are 502 certified, pending paying the certification fee. In December, we were able to ship our first batch, so people, at least in the US were able to get the key by Christmas. And in January, for the first time, we presented our story at Schmookon, and you can check the video on YouTube. So one little thing about our product. So we have the open source security key for consumer, and we also have solo hackers. This is the same open source hardware, and the software, the firmware is unlocked, so you can reprogram it yourself, whether you want to learn more about embedded systems or you want to explore our security features. And so with this, I want to really thank our two hosts tonight, Hacker Noon, which is where I blog, which, is, which was instrumental to our launch, and of course, GitHub, which is where we store everything, firmware and hardware. And a big thank to you also, guys. And my final invitation is to join our community so we can make security more open, both in hardware and in software. Thank you. Thank you.